So the first few tips um, I'm going to talk about is just to uh, show you different ways of holding the cutter um, if you don't have the Morse tape or cutter holder. So if you've got a spare chuck you can just take the jaws off um, and that actually fits quite nicely in the carrier so you can use that successfully um, on a standard small uh, four jaw chuck. I've also got um, the engineering jaws, we've actually used that um, so I've sort of you know, shown how that's used but that works really nice as well. Um, the other way um, <coughs> is to use uh, a Jacobs chuck, this is a quick release one. Um, but never, I'd never recommend putting it straight into there and holding the cutter um, because it's very likely to sort of vibrate loose. So if you've got one with a drawbar, that's fine. Um, but just as another little tip, um, it's actually a very safe way of holding the Jacobs chuck is to actually put your chuck on. Um, and I've noticed that the two moss taper fits nicely in the centre. The jaws will grab on the outer circle um, and then it's fully encapsulated in the chuck and it's safe, it's not going to vibrate loose and you can quite happily turn the threads that way. Sometimes it's just a tiny bit out but if it's spinning at 3000 RPM it's still going to make a nice clean cut so that's just a safe way um, of holding the cutter. And of course what we've already shown, um, the cutter holder with the drawbar um, if you haven't got these other options. So the next little tip I want to talk about is um, when you're actually cutting um, the thread itself so I don't know if you noticed the way that I actually held the chuck and the piece of work but I found that if you hold it like this when you're actually cutting um, I put just a slight forward force or support with my left hand while I'm cutting and then when I'm coming back out of the cut just put a little bit of pressure on with this finger as I'm coming out and what that does is just ease the wood off the cutter just to prevent it from sort of catching and maybe tearing a bit out. So um, over the you know sort of year or so that I've been using the jig, I found that that does actually help, and that's worth uh, doing that. Um, the other little thing about the jig is um, the bit on the back here. I'll just turn that round. You'll see a little Allen key. Um, that little grub screw there actually adjusts the click and how um, how much force you want the sort of ball bearing in there to sort of bind down. So the more you tighten it in the more it clicks but it gets harder to turn the handle so that might just be something you want to personally adjust I adjust them to what I think is right um, but if you can't feel the click clearly then just tighten that bit up again and you can feel it more positively as you're cutting so you've seen the um, hinge plate in operation um, and how that works and goes back uh, into the right position um, just one thing to mention it is a retrofit to jigs that have already previously been purchased so um, if you've bought um, a jig before, you can just buy that part and it will all fit and add together. So um, a little thing I want to mention with the basic kit. So if you haven't got the hinge plate that allows you to check whether you've got the thread, um, there is actually quite an easy way of actually getting it back in position if you do actually get it wrong. So if you get your offset wrong and it's too tight. So for instance, I've done the cut, I pull away, I find that it's too tight. Darn it, you know, you need to take a bit more off. Um, it's not the end of the world so what you need to do is just get it back in position give yourself the same gaps as what you had before as if we were doing the kiss test um, we get it just above the threads and we get it parallel so we just line that up get it parallel which I've done yeah next thing we need to do is just get the cutter lined up with the valley of the thread yeah so it's in the same line so what this jig allows you to do, this collar system here is quite accurately machined. So you've actually got um, quite a bit of play within that for realigning the thread up. So you just simply look down, line it up. Yep, so you might see a little gap here, but we've lined the cutter up with the valley. Um, take it down a couple of clicks, take the cutter out and then just do a click at a time and you'll see it will cut back in the right position and then you might just want to do an extra click after you've used the sandpaper on the tips same as what we showed you in the other video and that's how you'd use the basic jig to realign if you need, needed to take just a little bit more down so um, I've shown you briefly the extra spindles that you can purchase this is a 14 TPI and this is how they'll come with this preset now sometimes after use there's a little plastic bit in there 
you might find that there's you know a little bit of play develops. Um, if that happens, then all you need to do is just release that nut, just a, a fine, just such a fine little turn, just to pinch that in, retighten it up, and you're good to go. There should be a little bit of resistance there, and that's actually quite important. If it run really free, you could get it spinning with the cutter. Yeah, it could sort of run away. So you do need a bit of resistance there, and it cuts better that way with that bit of resistance going in the cutter. Um, but that takes all the play 100% out of that front. And it's actually engineered to be um, wobble free at the back. That's actually uh, built in. Um, the other little thing about the jig, you'll notice that, um, you know, apart from this one, which we've talked about and you can adjust, there's other small little grub screws. Don't touch any of those. Um, they're all to hold bearings and bits that are inside to make it all run smooth. So the only thing you should ever really need to touch is this one here if you want to adjust the click. This one here if you find that the slide gets sloppy because this puts tension on the wobble that way. So that's the only one. Same as that, you undo it and just pinch it up a little bit. Uh, and of course with you know lots of use that will wear down just a tad uh, and after maybe six months you'll just have to re-tighten that. But all the other grub screws that you'll find underneath, um, please just leave those alone because they'll be undoing bearings and stuff inside. Um, so thanks for watching again and I hope those tips were useful. Um, if you do have any more questions or queries, please just contact me uh, on the details below. Thank you for watching.